welcome back to Arc Tutorials. This is a brand new series, a four part series on REST API top 40 interview question and answer series. These questions that I'm bringing are equally important for everybody who is into IT developer, QA or full stack developer as all these questions relate in some or the other way that you will work as part of your daily job. So let's go ahead start this series. Before we start the question answer series, I would request you to get this entire presentation of four part series as an ebook PDF copy on REST API interview questions at arctutorials.gumroad.com. If you have any questions, write to me at surya.arad at gmail.com. Let's start the question answer series. All right, the first uh, question is what is an API? An API stands for Application Programming Interface. What it basically means is a collection of functions, procedures, classes which allows us to communicate between two applications or libraries. An, ap an API is a software intermediary that enables two applications to communicate. If you are a UI developer, you will want to work with API to integrate that. If you are a backend developer, you might want to create APIs and expose them so that the front-end team can utilize them or in general there could be microservices which can talk to each other at the end of the day in simple terms an api you can say that is a collection of functions and procedures which allows us to communicate between two applications or libraries some of the well-known public apis uh, examples you can give like google maps api there is amazon advertising api there is twitter api there is youtube api all these are restful apis that are exposed now we talked about, I mentioned the word RESTful, right? So let's talk about that. What is REST? REST stands for Representational State Transfer. It's an architecture style based on HTTP protocol. What it basically does is it provides a lot of several guidelines and which allows us to build web services and hence they are called RESTful APIs. The guidelines ensure that the request and resources are sent easily they are developed efficiently, there is a standard naming of them and how they communicate over the HTTP protocol. There are several defined HTTP methods that we utilize as part of REST. That's what you should explain about the basic understanding of REST. Now, I'll continue the same thing a little bit. If you see all these are terms are related, but you should know everything, how it differs. What is a REST API? An API is a software to software interface that allows otherwise separate applications to interact and share data. A REST API, also called as RESTful API, is an API that follows REST principles. We will talk about the REST principles as we progress in the series. For now, all you should know is that whichever API that follows the REST principles is called as a RESTful API or a REST API. In REST API, all data are treated as resources. Okay, very, very important. Each one represented by a unique uniform resource identifier or also called as URI. These are the fundamentals that everybody should be aware. Like I said, be it a developer, QA, backend developer. These are the concepts everybody must know. Now let's talk about RESTful API, some of the APIs that are exposed like a Twitter API, right? It makes the Twitter uh, tweets available from a certain profiles, right? If you look at YouTube API from a particular channel, you can expose the APIs, etc. So those are called RESTful APIs. Now let's talk, continue about API and talk what is API testing, right? Why is it important? When we talk about API testing, API testing is testing of APIs and its integration with the services. Here, we test the entirety of an API from various different use cases. Like, for example, whether the data that we are retrieving is in the correct format, whether the data is correct, whether it has all the required keys, whether it has all the expected data, whether is it secured, is it requiring authentication, is it requiring any certain headers, etc. The end-to-end -end aspects of testing that API is called as API testing. Now, this is one of the commonly asked question. I mean, a lot of junior developers always come back and say, is API considered a software, right? 
so now that's a that's a um, tricky question to answer but in a in short we can say that apis are not really software okay they are the interfaces that's the right word for them they are the interfaces which helps us in data exchange and functionality among different applications an api is a provides access to data as well as functionality think of it like um, it's a request you make a request to certain application in return it will give you data that communication between two applications is called a api so it's not really a software we can call that it's a it's a api interface okay that remember this keyword that's the interface now again a lot of times people try to confuse the interviewers try to con confuse and they'll say so what is the protocol that rest apis use or depend on all the rest apis use http protocol okay hypertext transfer protocol that's used to communicate between different systems rest apis can be easily deployed over internet since http is of the same protocol right so you can have a public accessible apis right and that's why because they are hosted on http protocol and they are they use http protocol that's why it can be easily accessed via any uh, web app interface now let the next question logical question they'll start asking you is about which are the http request methods that are supported by rest okay now don't get carried away because there are a lot of other methods i will talk about them any http request method indicates an action that the client wants to perform through on a resource right everything here we call it as a resource in restful apis so any http method that we use is trying to do a certain operation on a resource there are mainly four primary requests okay again there are many i'll talk about them also you should talk about get get means request a resource from the server post means create a new submit a data and create a new resource put means updates an existing resource on the server delete obviously by the name itself it says delete a resource or a remove a resource then there is also patch patch what it does it's an optional it will update the optional fields whereas put will entirely replace the content i will cover that in the next question or so so stay hold on to that thought so when you are asked about the important or the main methods http methods talk about get post put delete and patch so what are crud operations right uh, this is a common basic functionality that is performed on various um, modules or entities in the schema crud stands for create read update and delete in short it's called crud operation now each of these actions correspond to a re http request while create for creation you will use the http post method for reading you can use get for updating we'll use either put or patch and for deleting we'll use the delete http request method now what is the difference between put post and patch this if you are attending a job this is a prime question that is often asked okay irrespective whether you are a ui developer back end qa or just getting started junior developer senior developer this everybody should know so let's go ahead and learn about them a put request is used for both creating and updating a new object in the database now look at the text that i have made bold if the resource already exist then put will update the resource so i told you we will use put to update only when it is available let's say for example you are trying to update user id number 10 if user id 10 exist put method will update the details of that particular resource if it is not found it will go ahead and create one entry for you okay so put can be used for both creating as well as updating but as part of restful api always make sure that you use put only for updating never for creating that's against the guideline now post post request is used for creating a new resource that means here we are creating a new resource that means we send the data to a u api and it will absorb the data do validation check, sanity check data check and then it will create a new resource 
whereas patch method is used to apply the partial modification to a resource. Let's say you want to only update few fields of a resource. Then you will use patch. But put will every time replace the entire object, okay, entire structure, entire data. That's the main difference between put and patch. Patch will only do partial modification whatever objects you send. Whereas put will replace the entire resource if it is found. If not, it will create one. I hope all these three are clear. Make sure that you stop here, read this text, make your fundamentals clear. Now, what are some of the drawbacks of REST? Right? While statelessness is a benefit of REST, it sometimes can be a disadvantage. The reason being that REST APIs do not preserve states. That means it cannot go back to the previous state or go to the next, like how we have in uh, modern frameworks, some of the modern framework state management. In other words, the server does not keep record of past interactions. Okay, If preserving state is necessary, then it falls on the client. Okay, Additionally, REST is less strict with its security measure than SOAP. Now SOAP is basically, it's an XML based thing, so it's more strict. REST is mostly on the JSON side, so which is not strict at all. And that's where you would see some of the um, errors or, you know, security lapse, all that. It also makes REST a poor choice for sending confidential information between servers and clients. Now, you really, you cannot be transferring important information just via REST, right? You have to do a lot of encoding, base64 encoding, etc., or have hidden secret passwords or tokens or keys in the backend, store it somewhere, read it from a bit bucket or S3 bucket or in a server vault, etc. Right? So you really don't, uh, it's, it's a drawback, right? You can't really send confidential information. And that's one of the drawbacks of REST. Again, REST is used pretty heavily with a lot of uh, security layers and process layers. But you should be know you should know you should be aware of some of the drawbacks that comes with REST. Now, what are some of the benefits of REST? Right? Obviously, there are a lot of benefits. Some of the benefits that you should talk is REST is based around HTTP, right? Which means you don't have you don't need a separate infrastructure to host to deploy all that. It works well with the web HTTP protocol, so you can easily deploy over the web and can be accessible. REST uses simple method technologies like XML, JSON, right, which are easy to learn. Because REST communicates, communications are stateless, that means server and client are always decoupled. Once a request is made, once a response is sent, that's it, done. They are separate now. REST architecture is flexible enough to adapt a huge variety of use cases. Okay. And REST is lightweight architecture compared to other uh, options like SOAP, etc. Applications which are built with REST are generally faster than those built with other APIs. Okay, since the processing, the, re the return, usually it's more about on the performance side. They are generally easy, uh, they are faster. And REST is easy to test in the browser with an API testing tool like Postman or Catalin Studio, etc. All right, that brings us to the end of part one of this particular series uh, on REST API top 40 interview question answer series. Um, Join me in the next episode. We will continue this four part series and we will make sure that you are well averse with everything that they may ask you about REST API in any interview. I wish you good luck. Check out the other parts so that you have continuity and you master the REST API interview questions. Thank you so much for joining. See you in the next episode.